I definitely kind of stumbled into comedy. I am a comedian, writer, have a website. Those all hold up in court. I am a daughter, sister, friend, friend of me, enemy, Emmy, Oscar. Kind of lost my train of thought at the end of that one. Turned into more of a word association. I am an anxious depressive, as you heard, therapy regular, PMS enthusiast. Trying to reclaim that last one, bring it back strong. I think what actually got me the courage to first do stand up was weirdly that, like, I had had like problems with eating like my second year of school and took time off and eventually was like diagnosed with depression and I just started writing about those things because I was very much in my head and I was like well if this is all that's filling your head might as well try to write about this. I think people responded in a way where I was like oh wow this is something that I think people really relate to because it can be feel very alienating sometimes to get on stage and talk about mental health and have no one understand what you're talking about. Yeah, has that ever happened that like you've gone on and you've talked about mental health, talked about anxiety, depression, and people are just kind of like staring at yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just every so often they're just not gonna yeah. get it and you have to be like, that's okay because I know there is yeah. someone who listened to this and it actually meant a lot to them. I went to like Campus Health Center and like the resident nurse there was like the first person I sort of like figured this thing out with that I was struggling. She had like a whole bunch of cards and then she was like, just pick two that you think might help you uh, along the way. And I still like carry them around with me as a reminder to like check in with myself and like how I'm doing and, and not always be like worried about everyone else. I sort of read it as authenticity to like self and like to sort of not always be like, this is what people expect of me versus like, what do I actually want? And even in comedy, it's like, what do I want to say versus what do I think people want to hear from me? And then patience, I think is more like, don't rush to get to a goal. Like it's cliched, but it really is about getting there. And I have found that even as I've had more success in my field, like, it never is about the thing, it's about, you know, how you got there or the people you can share it with. Like, it's so rarely the actual thing itself. If you can talk a little bit about what your notebooks mean to you and like how, what your process is like. I think a lot of people see these amazing com comedians and yourself included on stage and they wonder like, how do I, where do I draw from? Here I just wrote down subway saxophonist. This guy was busking on the subway, but he was so bad. It's as if he watched an instructional video on saxophone and said, I'll do everything the opposite. I still write in like sixth grade cursive. It's very embarrassing. I never like evolved out of it. I think the idea is just that you're always like beating off your environment and trying to like look at the world in an analytical way. I mean, I think comedians in essence like often have philosopher brains in that they're often questioning everything and that's kind of how jokes come about where you're like well why is it this way you know instead of just taking it for face value i went through airport security the other day i went through that big cylinder where it has to make sure like each of your cells gets cancer and uh <laughs> And I go through, and the agent, without even looking up from the screen, he just goes, kind of to himself, he just goes, oh, right in the hoo-ha. <laughs> and I was like, why did that section go off? I was like, did all my coins fall down there? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, no, I remember. I, I replaced mine with a gun, because those are less regulated. Um, it is like a very inherently masculine art form in that you're Essentially, like, these are my ideas and you have to listen to them. This is a one-way conversation. And women are always socialized to be, like, accommodating and, like, what do you want to talk about? Or, like, I'm just going to listen to you yeah. talk. So it's very much like reversing that power dynamic. I think in the end, it's like you can only really stick to what you are and what you know. And, and people will, you know, eventually, like, gravitate towards that. Or you will create your own opportunities. and. So it, it, to me, it's always like sort of led with what I want to do and then like all the labels come after that. So especially to younger girls who might not think that they're funny, um, what would be your advice to them? I would say the biggest thing is just to try because I think for me, I, a lot of years I just spent thinking about it in my head and then 
The only way to really know was to dive in.